within the kubernetes cluster containers are not deployed as containers containers are wrapped with another level called pods Within a pod, there can be multiple containers as well. A pod will share the same storage as well as the networking space. To create the pods, you will be using kubectl run command. You cannot use kubectl run command to create deployments in the latest version of kubectl. Use kubectl run the pod name minus minus image and the image name to create a pod. If you want to create the container in a different namespace, you can use minus n and the namespace name uh, those options you can add it into the same command if the container is exposing some applications on a defined port you can use minus minus port uh, and define the port uh, in the kubectl run command itself to set the environment variables you can use minus minus env and provide what is the environment name and the value for it while you are creating the pod itself you can assign labels into that using minus minus labels and provide key value pairs separated with the comma you can run these commands in the dry run mode it will not create the components in that case uh, you can add minus minus dry run uh, equals client flag Port creation uh, definition, you can export it as YAML files using a minus or YAML flag. You can uh, save that output into a file uh, using this definition as well. And then you can open that using VIO nano editor and then you can make the changes. After making the changes into the YAML file, you can create these resources using kubectl create minus F and the file name. You can do the same using kubectl apply minus F and the file name as well. So make sure if the pod is already available in the cluster, you will not be able to create the pod again. You need to delete the pod first. You can use kubectl delete pod and the pod name to delete this pod. You can execute kubectl delete pod and minus minus force and the grace period zero to delete the pod immediately. Additionally, if you want to delete the pod using uh, the labels, you can use the selector uh, option selector and then you can define what are the uh, label key value pairs let's say app equals demo all the pods with the app uh, demo label will get deleted with this command or else if you already have the yaml file and you have the pod definition inside it you can use kubectl delete minus f and the file name in that case all the resources that you have defined in that yaml file will get deleted from your kubernetes cluster when you're creating the pods, you can pass different commands and the arguments into the container. If you only want to pass the attributes by keeping the default command, you can use minus minus and pass the arguments afterwards. If you want to change the default command as well, that is defined in the uh, container image, you can use minus minus command minus minus. You can provide the command and then provide the arguments afterwards. Additionally, there are multiple attributes that you can pass into the kubectl run command. Uh, run command minus minus expose uh, will expose uh, the created pod as a service. If you want to change the service account, you can use minus minus service account. If you want to set the annotations, you can use minus minus annotation uh, option as well in this kubectl run commands. To get the pods, you can use kubectl get pods command. To get the pods in a specific namespace, you can use kubectl get pods minus n and define what is the namespace name. If you want to get all the pods in all the namespaces, you can use minus capital A or else minus minus all namespaces flag. If you want to know the node name as well as the IP of these pods, you can use kubectl get pods minus o wide flag that will print additional details including the node name as well as the ip of this pod if there is a pod created in the cluster and then you need to get that specification into a yaml file you can use kubectl get pod and the pod name and minus o yaml to get the definition as uh, yaml and then save it into the file to label a pod you can use kubectl label pod and the pod name and then define what is the key and then what is the value if the label is already existing and then you need to change the value, you can use minus minus override flag. To view the pod labels when you are getting the list of pods, you can use minus minus show labels flag. To print the uh, label values as a table column, you can use show columns. If you want to get pods with specific labels defined, you can use kubectl get pods selector app equals demo2. In that case, all the pods with app 
demo2 variable is set those ports will be listed in the output a minus minus selector the short term is minus l you can use it as well uh, instead of selector to remove the labels you can use kubectl label pod pod name and key of this label with a minus sign that will remove this label additionally if you have multiple ports that you need to remove these labels you can define all of these ports with spaces then define what is the label with the minus sign label deletion can also be done with the selector attribute minus l and define what is the label and you can remove that flag when you want to create a container which doesn't get restarted you can put minus minus a restart and assign the restart policy into never in the case this container will not be restarted while you are creating the pod you can connect it into the shell itself by putting minus it flag and additional minus rm when you are exiting from this shell this container will be automatically terminated when you pass an argument into the same command rather than connecting into the shell it will execute the command print the output and then terminate the pod this is an example where when you have an nginx pod you need to connect into that pod ip and then check whether the nginx is up and running you can get the nginx pod ip using the first command and afterwards you can run a busy box container in the, into the container you can pass a wget command with the ip address that will print the output of the nginx uh, index.html file to get to know all the details about a pod configuration and the events of this pod you can use the kubectl describe pod and the pod name command during the exam if you are asked to make some additional configurations into the pod if you don't remember that you can use kubectl explain command to get the uh, documentation of that section if you enter kubectl explain pods command that will print the pods uh, what are the different attributes that you can pass if you want to specifically get pod spec container sections documentation you can get it uh, with kubectl explain pods spec containers in that case only that section will get printed to add or update annotations in a pod you can use kubectl annotate pod pod name and then provide the key value pair of the annotation if you have multiple pods you can use other two definitions as well to remove the annotations you can use the same methodology that you followed for the labels if you want to execute a specific commands in a pod with a single container you can use kubectl exec pod name and minus minus you can pass the uh, command afterwards if you want to print the date if you want to print the environment variable or else you can put any other uh, commands uh, with the minus minus flag if the pod has multiple containers in it you can pass the container name with the minus c uh, as well if you want to connect into a row terminal uh, inside a container you can use kubectl exec you need to go into the interactive mode with minus it and the pod name minus minus sh or minus minus bash or else minus minus bin sh bin bash and then it will get connected into that particular terminal if you have some ports with an application running in an specific port to check this application you can port forward that application into your local laptop using the port forwarding command use a kubectl port forward pod pod name and define what is your local port and what is the pod container port if you want to change the image of an existing pod which is already available in the cluster you don't need to delete this pod you can change it using the kubectl set image pod and the pod name and then you can define the container name and the image once you passed it it will change the image on the fly you don't need to delete the pod and then recreate it further you need to master how to use json path to filter and specific parameters from output this is an example of json path to print the uh, name as well as the container image from the kubectl get command additionally you can use custom columns as well in this scenario if you want to print the images this will print the output in a tabular format the headers will be name and the image if you don't want to print the headers you can use minus minus no headers flag as well that will not print the headers only print the output that you have defined you can check the logs of a pod with a single container using kubectl log 
and the pod name if you want to tail the logs you can pass the minus f flag kubectl logs minus f and the pod name when you have multiple containers in a single pod you need to define what is that containers name using minus c and the container name if the pod is crashed or restarted if you want to check the logs of the previous instance of this pod you can check it by passing the minus p flag kubectl logs uh, the pod name and minus p will print the output of the previous instance of the pod